in an isolated corner of Africa, lions rule. And for these predators, no prey is too big. During the dry season, they set their sights on one giant in particular, Cape Buffalo, on the march. A force that seems unstoppable. But an army of lions is arrayed against them. The buffalo are well armed with nearly a ton of horn, hoof, and muscle. It will take every weapon in the lion's arsenal, every tactic, and every ounce of strength to bring them down. It's early May in Africa's Ruaha National Park. The dry season is just beginning. The savanna is turning brown in the withering heat. For some, this is a time of plenty. Thirsty animals congregate around every available source of water. And the lions are watching. Today, they zero in on a young impala. She's wandering off on her own, away from the safety of the group. The hunters move in. They'll work from two sides to block the impala's exit from the riverbed. Perfect kill. The Impala won't make much of a meal for this hungry pride. But bigger game is coming. With the start of the dry season, the buffalo are on the move. Many of them spend the rainy months grazing and breeding up on the nearby plateau, where there are fewer predators. Once the rains end, they must come down from their refuge in order to survive. Over the next seven months, they'll trek through the river valleys in search of dwindling reserves of food and water. As days pass, small groups join to form a herd, one of several in this part of Ruaha. The buffalo travel together for mutual protection. They'll need it. Their journey will take them straight into lion country. Ruaha is Tanzania's largest national park and its most remote. Still largely untouched by humans, this place remains truly wild.
Life here is governed by natural laws and by the ancient bonds between predators and prey. In the rest of Africa, lions are disappearing. But here in Ruaha, they thrive. At the heart of the park lives one of the greatest concentrations of lions on Earth. This area is bounded by three main rivers, the Madonia, the Mwagusi, and the Great Ruaha. It's home to some 150 lions, divided into a dozen different prides. The buffalo herd will have to run this deadly gauntlet, moving from one pride territory to the next to find water. Their arrival in the territory of the Madonia pride immediately puts them in grave danger. This is one of the biggest prides, with 26 lions. To hunt buffalo, they use strategies perfected over countless dry seasons. With the Madonia River starting to dry up, the buffalo seek out every remaining pool. Each sip increases the risk of attack. The herd is exposed in the riverbed and they're skittish. When a lone lioness approaches, they panic. presence has triggered a stampede. Now the challenge is to isolate a target without being trampled. She seeks out the weak and the slow. Animals that can't keep up with the herd. Even for the pride's best hunter, finishing off a buffalo alone is no easy feat. The injured cow's calls attract attention. Buffalo will fight to rescue one of their own, but they're reluctant to walk down this steep riverbank. They can't tell how many lions may be down there. Lioness and Buffalo are on their own. Teeth and claws versus thick skin and powerful horns. It's an endurance game that this lioness refuses to lose. The outcome is inevitable. The lioness's hard-won victory will supply her pride with hundreds of pounds of meat. The buffalo are a resource that must be exploited while it lasts. The Madonia 
is usually the first river in this part of the park to stop flowing. And when it does, the buffalo, driven by thirst, will have to move on. For a newborn calf, the timing couldn't be worse. He's only hours old, still trailing his umbilical cord. He's in no shape to travel. A buffalo cow will often stay behind with her calf, waiting until it's ready to move. But she's trying her best to get him going. Others in the herd are less forgiving. As the calf struggles to find his footing, his mother faces a heartbreaking dilemma. Should she forsake the protection of the herd to stay with her infant, or abandon him and move on with the group? instincts compel her to leave. The calf is on his own, alone in the gathering dusk. His mother appears to have a change of heart. Perhaps she's reluctant to desert the calf she carried for 11 long months. But that's exactly what she must do in order to survive. Even though survival for her means certain death for him. For the little calf, alone on the savanna, time is running out. Once he's spotted by a predator, he won't stand a chance. But somehow, he finds the strength to move. And not a moment too soon. It's nearly dark by the time he catches up with the herd. With his mother's protection, he'll remain vulnerable for months to come. An easy target for predators. As water sources dry up, more buffalo join the march. swell until it numbers a thousand or more. The buffalo's search for water brings them into the territory of the Baobab pride. Ancient Baobab trees, some as old as a thousand years, give the pride its name. And they give this place an alien appearance. This is prime real estate with nearly 10 kilometers of river frontage along the Morgusi. That draws prey in great numbers, which in turn supports an enormous pride.
there are 33 hungry mouths to feed, including several litters of cubs. But it's the females that do all the hunting. The two resident males seem to fit the popular stereotype. Lazy lords of the pride. They must once have been powerful lions to win such a choice territory. Now they're past their prime, but so far, they're still holding on to their pride. With the buffalo on their turf, the females spend their days doing reconnaissance, scouting potential targets. The two old males keep their distance while keeping an eye on the lionesses and on the herd. The herd, meanwhile, is struggling to find water. Just like the Madonia, the Mogusi River is drying up. The buffalo follow the pathfinders, making their way toward the edge of the territory. But the pride is not about to let them leave. Blocking exit points along the territorial boundary, the lions keep the buffalo bottled up. The herd's boldest members push back. They confront the lions and force them to retreat to the rocks. a stalemate. The lions can't attack and the buffalo can't escape. As the sun sets, the lions begin to probe the herd, looking for weak spots. Now, the odds are squarely in the big cat's favor. These lions kill under cover of darkness. The surviving buffalo absorb their losses and make their way out of the Baobab territory. The pride males didn't take part in the hunt, but they share the fruits of their lioness's labor. They may not enjoy such privileges for long. At their age, they're vulnerable to challenges by younger males from outside. The Baobab pride is ripe for a takeover. Most of the buffalo herd, including the calf that was so nearly abandoned, is leaving this territory unharmed. But they're about to face an even more fearsome group of lions. The bushbuck pride. They control one of the best territories around, with plenty of shade and good grazing along the great Ruaha River. 
There's always good hunting here. And this pride of nine adults is healthy, prosperous, and growing fast. Two of its six lionesses are raising cubs. So no job is more important than hunting. And these lions will do whatever it takes to provide for the pride. All of the bushbuck lions are powerful killers. And that includes the three adult males. Unlike the old baobab males, they are still in their prime, and they don't depend on the lionesses for a meal. Every one of the pride's adults is capable of taking down big prey. These lions are buffalo specialists and daylight hunters. They shadow the herd while it's in their territory, but usually delay their attack until the buffalo are drinking, or right after they've had their fill. The males join together to hunt as a team. They target the older bulls that trail behind the main herd. These bulls may be past their prime and top heavy, but they can still put up a fight separate one bull from the rest of the group. big and powerful for a frontal assault. They have to work from behind. on the defensive, the buffalo makes a run for it. But there's no escape. This will be a battle of attrition. The bushbuck females use a different strategy from the males. For them, it's divide and conquer. By splitting the big herd into several groups, they reduce their risk from stampeding hooves. Just inside the forest, a lioness sizes up one of the splinter groups. follows them down to the riverbed. The other lionesses can head off any escape. Despite the threat, the buffalo have to drink. After most of them have finished, the lioness surveys the riverbed, looking for a target. Among the stragglers is the same calf that was almost left behind earlier in the season.
He's easy prey. But the lioness loses sight of him in the milling crowd. Instead, she targets his mother. The rest of her team keeps would-be rescuers at bay. But even that task is fraught with danger. Neither side backs down. Like a matador, the bushbuck lioness is trying to force the buffalo to charge. Once the cow lowers her head, she aims between the horns. Then she just has to hold on. Eventually, help arrives. Once again, the calf is alone. And this time, there will be no happy reunion. But even cruel fate cannot defeat this young buffalo. Despite the loss of his mother, he falls in line with the moving herd. If he can bond with the old males bringing up the rear, they'll protect him until he's strong enough to fend for himself. While the lionesses took down the cow, the bride's males battled their bull to the point of exhaustion. They too finally prevailed. For the bushbuck pride, it's been a good day. As for the herd, after months of attacks, they're about to get a reprieve, at least temporarily. Not all lions in Ruaha hunt buffalo. The herd is moving into the territory of the Kumi pride, who will let them graze in peace. The name Kumi is Swahili for 10, because there are 10 lions in this pride. The lioness who leads them is a master tactician. She and her sister are the only adults. They have eight youngsters to train in the fine arts of hunting. As they patrol their territory, they keep their eyes peeled. The Kumi lions specialize in daylight ambush hunting. They look for targets of opportunity, mostly zebra and antelope. Even giraffes are fair game. When one ambles past the young lions resting in the shade, they're quick to take notice. This is a temptation they can't resist. The trick is getting close enough to launch an attack before they're spotted. The giraffe's best defense is a long stride, but the lions are in hot pursuit. One young female shows promise as a hunter, but she's not quite ready to take down this giant. The youngsters made a tactical error by striking too soon. The giraffe outpaces them. It was a valiant effort, 
but these novices have a lot to learn. The pride's lionesses, on the other hand, are master hunters. They've had years to hone their craft. The leader heads down river, where zebra are gathering on the bank. She and her sister work their way closer to pick a target. Baboons and impala have chosen the same watering spot. So has a group of buffalo. The lions can't afford to spook these bystanders. If they raise an alarm, it would spoil the attack. When the zebra climb down the bank, the lionesses take up position. Down on the river, the impala are making trouble. Males are going head to head, challenging their rivals and defending their mates. The commotion upsets the neighbors. The animals begin to scatter. For the hunters, it's now or never. The leader makes her choice on the run. Chokehold is a classic technique. And her sister helps complete the kill. As long as the kumi lions are satisfied with smaller prey, the buffalo have little to fear. But even here, the herd isn't completely safe. Other lions have entered this territory. Lions with a taste for buffalo and no respect for boundaries. This is an unusual pride, the Inja. Their name means hungry. It's a good description for these lean cats. The group of 15 lions has its own territory. But to satisfy their hunger for buffalo, they trespass on the territories of at least five other prides. Just like human poachers, they depend on stealth and speed to make clandestine kills while trying to avoid the local residents. The Inja lions usually go after calves, easy to catch and kill. Today, they're hunting in the Kumi tribe's territory but they're playing a dangerous game. If they're spotted by the Kumi, they risk being attacked. Late in the afternoon, the buffalo herd makes its way down to the water. The Inja follow. The lions wait until most of the herd has retreated to the forest. Then they look for stragglers. The Inja single out a calf. 
Its mother and the other buffalo have no chance to mount a defense. The lions finish off the calf quickly. The herd has suffered one more loss. Fortunately for the young orphan calf, he was not the one targeted. His luck seems to be holding. But there are still harsh trials ahead. Every day, the buffalo's situation grows more dire. By late summer, most of the streams have dried up completely. The buffalo herd's weakest members won't survive the next few months. Many of the lions are suffering too. Some are nursing injuries from their battles with buffalo. For a lion, a broken leg is certain death. Others are forced to rely entirely on scavenging to survive. This lioness must compete with jackals for her share of the scraps. As they continue their search for water and food, the desperate buffalo double back. They return to the border area of the Baobab pride. By now, the Mwagusi River is long gone. But somehow, the elephants know how to find water. They dig in the riverbed, uncovering hidden sources. Other animals take advantage of the new water holes. And some, including a few of the Baobab lions, have even mastered the elephant's technique. They are desperate for water, just like all of Ruaha's inhabitants. With the lions monopolizing this site, the buffalo must move on. Their pathfinder leads them downriver, looking for safer places to drink. But danger lurks everywhere in the Baobab territory, and recently, a new threat has arrived. There are strangers on the prowl, four big male lions. They may have come here looking for food, but they've stumbled on something better. A pride that's ripe for a takeover. The intruders make their presence known gradually, marking trees and bushes along the main game trails. There's not much the old resident males can do, except broadcast loud warnings. They go unheeded. A violent confrontation is brewing. After weeks in the Baobab territory, the young outsiders finally make their move, sniffing out the resident males for a showdown. These battles are often fought to the death, but the old lions must meet the challenge. Their lionesses will wait for the outcome.
The battle is short and one-sided. The old Baobab males are beaten and forced into exile. Now the pride's cubs are under threat. The new rulers will kill any young sired by the deposed males. Their best chance for survival is to flee with their mother. But a single mother will get no help with the hunting until her cubs are at least a year old. She'll have to provide food and protect them from predators, including other lions. After she escapes, the usurpers begin mating relentlessly with the remaining lionesses. They'll make sure that the pride's next generation carries their genes. That's how they consolidate their takeover. The lions are getting a head start on the future. But for now, the challenge is surviving this hard season. residents have reached the limits of survival. Then, at long last, distant thunder signals a welcome transformation. After seven months, the rains are returning. Within weeks, there's an abundance of life-giving water. Animals no longer have to congregate at dwindling pools. Instead, they fan out across the green savanna, where the tributaries are now full and the grass is lush. Big buffalo herds break up into small groups again. Once they disperse, they're far less vulnerable to attack. Many buffalo head to the highlands to spend the coming months feeding and breeding. Calves that survive the dry season, including the young orphan, will have a chance to grow up in safer surroundings. For the lions, the rains are welcome, but new conditions bring new challenges. With their prey scattered, they have to hunt over wider distances, relying on tall grass for cover. But the rains won't last forever. In a few months, there will be another change of seasons. Once again, the buffalo will embark on their annual quest. And once again, the lions will be waiting. 